This is a course covering um, differential equations, in particular ordinary differential equations. And the majority, vast majority of this course will focus on linear differential equations. So to start off, I just want to say a few words about um, what differential equations are and how they compare to other things that you may already be familiar with. So um, most of you have probably worked quite a bit in your high school math and maybe in first year on algebraic equations. So algebraic equations are equations that relate some unknown real number. So uh, imagine you have some unknown number, well, maybe real, maybe complex uh, x, and you have some information about it that it satisfies an equation like Uh, let's say x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. So what we're looking for here is a real number or a complex number possibly that um, when plugged into this equation makes the equation true. Um, so you can use all sorts of methods, completing the square, quadratic formula, whatever you want. And once you find an x value, you can go back and plug it in to check. So in this case, we can factor this equation. So an x plus 2 and x plus 1 are the factors of x squared plus 3x plus 2. And once we see that, we get that x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to minus 2. Now, it's possible that we made a mistake along the way. We might want to check. And so what we can do is we can plug that x value or either of those or both of those x values in to see what happens. So we have minus 1 squared plus 3 times minus 1 plus 2. And let's see what that's equal to. We get 1 minus 3 plus 2, which is equal to 0. So when I plug it in, I do in fact get that x plugged into the right-hand side gives me 0. And you can do the same thing for minus 2. So that is what an algebraic equation is usually about. And it, we, I would describe it as an, an equation in an unknown number x. So differential equations are a little bit more general than that, or a little bit more complicated. In this case, we have an entire unknown function. So what do I mean by that? We have an unknown function, let's say x of t. And you can think of the unknown function x of t as being a whole collection of unknown numbers. Um, and so uh, we want some unknown function and we have some reason to believe maybe because we've done some modeling to derive an equation based on what x of t might be. Um, and it satisfies an equation that involves derivatives of the function. Okay, so what's an example of this? Well, it could be something like the time derivative of x all squared is equal to the sine of x. And here, x, I'm suppressing the dependence on t. So often I'll do this. Instead of writing out x of t, I'll just write um, x instead. Like this one, where the x of t is not explicitly written out, but you see uh, d dx or dx dt in the equation, you can assume that x is a function of t. In fact, even if you see x prime appearing there, in general in this course, um, a prime for me will usually almost always mean derivative with respect to t. And if it's not, if it doesn't, then I'll I'll make some comment or make it more clear. Okay. So um, the next thing I want to do is uh, go through an example of a simple differential equation. So let's say we have the equation x prime equal uh, minus 2x. And we want to find x of t that solves this. So in other words, what function has a derivative that's actually minus 2 times itself. 
so um, there are sort of method uh, method approaches to this where we go through a, a bunch of steps that you know in the end the last step gives us the answer x of t equal um, what I'd like to do here instead is just think about how, what we know about derivatives so let's just write down some direct attempts to come up with an answer so uh, we know or at least I hope you remember that the function x of t equal e to the t has a very simple derivative, and that is x prime is going to be e to the t, no change. So this is a bad guess because x of t is not equal to, or x prime of t is not equal to minus two times x of t, but it suggests a way of finding the right answer here. So this is not correct, but what do you think of this one? x of t equal e to the minus two t. How does the taking a derivative here differ? Well, the difference is we have to do a chain rule. So when we take x prime of t, we get e to the minus 2t, but then by the chain rule, a minus 2 pops out in front. And if I just replace e to the minus 2t here with x of t, you can see that x prime is in fact going to be equal to minus 2 times x of t. So this is a solution to our differential equation. Okay, now there's a special feature of this equation because it's linear, and we'll talk about what that means a little bit later. Um, you'll notice that um, if I take a different function, let's say y of t, and I'm not calling it x of t because I've already found a solution that I've named x of t and I just don't want to add confusion. So let's say we try a function like y of t equal 3e to the minus 2t. How does this differ? Does that complicate things at all? Is this also going to be a solution? And when you take the derivative of this guy, because the 3 is largely unaffected by the derivative, it just hangs around in front, and then I still have a minus 2 by the chain rule times e to the minus 2t. Now you can see that I have a 3e to the minus 2t, that's my y of t, and in the derivative I have a 3 and an e to the minus 2t. So this is, again, minus 2 times the original guess. And in fact, any number z of t equal any number c times e to the minus 2t is also a solution. OK, so um, and this is very similar, wrapped up in any method that we'll go through for solving an equation like this there's some step that involves an antiderivative. Normally, if we had an antiderivative of a function, you would have a plus c pop out along the way. But because of the, the way the method would work, in the end, that plus c ends up being a multiplicative constant in front of the solution. And when I go through some of those methods, you'll see what I mean. But this c is really very closely related to the plus c that you should be familiar with from antiderivatives.